After winning the rigged election against his cousin, John Kerry, Bush said that he had political capital. He went on to explain that that meant he could do whatever he wanted to. Look at the number of uniform personnel, all of them armed. Uh, it's estimated there are 60, 60,000 armed and uniformed uh, members of law enforcement here. Roughly uh, one police officer or soldier tasked to this duty per every four or five spectators, the highest ratio in history. You've driven around this city, Chris, the last couple of days. Brian and I were talking about it. It was close to an armed camp. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, George W. Bush and First Lady Laura Bush. Wave to them. Let them know that you love America. Minister, the presidential oath of office. Justice Rehnquist. Lord Bush went on to give an oath that he would protect and defend the Constitution when all he's been doing is trying to dismantle it. His new Attorney General, Alberto Gonzalez, has said publicly that President Bush is above the law, above the Constitution, a dictator. Will you raise your right hand, Mr. President, and repeat after me? I, George Walker Bush. I, George Walker Bush. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. The office of President of the United States. And will to the best of my ability. And will to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> So let's look at what Bush has actually done to the Constitution and Bill of Rights since getting into office. He passed Patriot Act I that dismantles at least seven of the first ten amendments. And under Section 802, all Americans are defined as terrorists. Under Section 802, the new definition of terrorism is redefined as acts that are dangerous to human life that violate any federal or state law. And when Bush talks about reauthorizing the Patriot Act, that's code for passing Patriot Act, too. Under the Patriot Act, Homeland Security has visited toy stores over possible trademark infringement. An Army doctor who complained too much was arrested by Homeland Security. Topless bars, zoning disputes, pot dealers, it's all under the Patriot Act. And starting in 2005, all new passports are digitally tracked by an RFID chip. It's easy to get in but hard to get out. And before he left office, Homeland Security Chief Tom Ridge called for a world ID card. In late 2004, Bush successfully got the Congress to pass a national ID card, craftily hidden in state driver's license under federal standardization. Bush told conservatives that it would stop illegal immigration. There's nothing in the bill concerning immigration other than the fact that it actually orders the states to accept consular matriculas issued by foreign nations. So it actually makes it easier to get into the country. The bill even talks about it being used as an internal passport at checkpoints. Bush also successfully rammed through the Orwellian named New Freedom Initiative. This forces every child in America from age 5 to 18 to be psychologically tested twice a year, whether you're homeschooled, private schooled, or public schooled. The guidelines for mental illness were written by a consortium of drug companies, and in their own internal documents, they bragged that they'll go from 15% of American children on psychotropic drugs and Ritalin to over 50%. The law states that without parental consent, while your child is at school, they will be forcibly tested. And Illinois is already jumping ahead. They're saying they're going to start forcibly testing all pregnant women. This is the type of nightmare that only Joseph Stalin could dream of. But our government is making it a reality. But if you look at foster children in America, over two-thirds of them are on psychotropic drugs. That's what happens when the state has control. Two-thirds on drugs. Well, I guess that's the new freedom. The federal government has spent billions and billions of dollars putting up cameras across the nation except for our borders. I have seen over 50 mainstream reports 
where video cameras are put in school bathrooms and showers. And when the schools get caught doing it, they say it's for your safety. And now the establishment just throws it in our face. Prepare to be scanned. We track you with your cell phones. We're putting cameras up on the street corners that read all your license plates and track everywhere you go. And we're going to tax you with these new cameras. We're going to put satellite tracker boxes in all your cars and transponders. We're going to tax you by the mile. This is just the way it is, so get used to it. Oh, and eight years ago, we started putting black boxes in all the new cars that track everything you do as well. And now industry and the federal government are just calmly saying that soon all new cars will have a camera in them that scan your face as you drive and instantly report back to the police department. If you're driving while you're tired or if you're arguing with your wife, under a new sales tax system being prepared that will be implemented through the national ID card, you'll have to thumb scan when you buy and sell. And the face scanning cameras we mentioned will keep track of you not just in your car, but as you walk down the street. Almost every federal, state, and local road in the country will be satellite and transponder track. We already mentioned that earlier. And when Californians heard about Governor Schwarzenegger's program, they got very upset. And over 90% of them were against it in polls. The governor just said, I don't care what you want, we're going to do this. It's going to take the average tax by the mile from 25 cents at the state level to over $3. Read it for yourself. It's the official news reports. Similar plans are being pushed by the feds in all 50 states. But that's just the financial hardship. There'll no longer be any open road. Everything you do will be tracked, chronicled, and traced. Whether it's a large highway or a rural road, everywhere you go will be chronicled. And in middle schools across the country, students are having to wear RFID tags around their necks, tracking and training them how to be good little prisoners. And now hospitals are openly discussing making their patients take implantable microchips. Bars in the United States and Europe make their patrons take chips before they can enter the VIP sections. And now the Mexican Attorney General has forced over 160 of his deputies to take implantable microchips if they want to work in his office. I, Richard Cheney, do solemnly swear. I, Richard Cheney, do solemnly swear. That I will def defend and support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. It's no wonder that Speaker of the House Dennis Haster stumbled over the oath as he read it. He's not stupid. He knows that a textbook dictatorship is being set up in America, complete with shadow government that can take control of Congress. Oh yes, now Congress has given its authority up to an unbridled executive branch. There have been other cryptic statements. The outgoing head of CENTCOM, General Tommy Franks, told Cigar Aficionado that if America is attacked by terrorists again, We'll have to suspend the Constitution in favor of a military form of government or martial law. It's abhorrent to American values to have the military involved in any way in civilian life, especially in law enforcement. It's been a staple of communist China and Nazi Germany, Soviet Russia, and Cuba today, but not America. Why are we following every telltale sign of a police state? We're dealing with a group of predators, an elite that sees us as cattle, as their slaves. They want to train us to be predators like they are, to join them in their quest for world empire, to be their cannon fodder. Just look at the torture they've been promoting on television and in movies, and then we watch as it manifests itself in the real world, in Iraq and Guantanamo Bay. What we're witnessing is the construction of a worldwide dictatorship. But to get it done, they have to be able to manipulate us into going along with it. They're confident that you won't wake up till it's too late. The good news is people are waking up in record numbers. The question is, now that you know the secret, now that you understand the inner workings of the new world order, will you take action to wake others up? and stand up against this Fourth Reich of the elite. The globalists have America and Europe in their grasp today, but tomorrow they want the world.
let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. Malicious lies that attempt to shift the blame away from the terrorists themselves, away from the guilty. Conspiracy theories, conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories. The hijackers were instruments of evil who died in vain. Behind them is a cult of evil which seeks to harm the innocent and thrives on human suffering.